Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Olivia and I make videos about anthropology every single Monday. And today we're doing an anthropology Q and A. Um, I'm very excited. I'm keeping it pretty casual today. Didn't move my map out of the background, which I usually do. I'm holding the microphone today to see how I like it. I feel very official um, rather than using my stand. So we're having a, a very good time today. Hello everyone, editing Olivia here to say that the sound from the microphone is a little bumpy at times throughout the video. I'm so sorry, I'll never do it again. Um, just thought I'd mention it here, so apologies if that gets a little annoying. And yeah, I'm so excited to answer all of your guys' questions about anthropology. So without further ado, let's just do it. Okay, so I left a post on the community tab of my YouTube channel. Thank you so much to everybody who left a comment down there. I'm gonna answer as many as I can today, but if I don't get back to you, I'm gonna write a personal response on there, so look out for that. Okay, so the first question is, I'm planning to graduate next year with a BA in anthropology and a minor in nonprofit management. How hard was the job search for you with the degree? Also, did you stick with just the physical slash scientific field or the cultural field? Thank you, love the videos. Thank you so much for supporting, that is so sweet. So I love this question. First of all, I wanna say that I think it's wonderful that you're doing anthropology in combination with nonprofit management. I think one of the downfalls of anthropology is the theoretical knowledge which, and that like lacks anything practical out there in the real world. So if you wanna go into nonprofit work, that is a wonderful, wonderful combination. So the job search for me, I ended up having a pretty unique experience with how I got my job. It ended up being through my YouTube videos. Um, the company that I work for now, they're called Socratica. They also have a YouTube channel. You can go check them out, they're great. Um, they reached out to me and I still had to go through the whole application process and interview process but the reason that I was told about you know that job even existing was because of the company reaching out but I think for anybody the you know job search is always a little bit of a numbers game so I found myself just applying to a bunch of places and my friends as well they were doing the exact same thing and then after you apply a bunch of places you you know you'll get interviews from a few of them and then hopefully get a job after that so you know, it wasn't too bad for me, um, but I think it helps a lot to have, you know, experience in whatever you want to do. So if you're young, start early, internships, summer jobs, volunteering, whatever it is. And I do think that helps get your shoe in the door and get those interviews earlier. Sorry if that was a little long-winded and not direct. I hope that answers the question. Oh, and I did, I'm kind of doing both. I do both the physical side of anthropology and cultural side of anthropology. Um, because I mean, I love it all. <laughs> the next question that I have is, the only question that I can think about at this time is, how strange your own culture seems to you after studying anthropology? And you know, I don't know if it's about how strange my own culture seems. I think I've just have like a more contextualized understanding of my own culture. So I'm from the United States um, and I don't know, I think I value my own like day-to-day -day life and experiences because i have a good understanding of like other cultures around the world and i think i can you know appreciate my own culture and also appreciate other cultures equally because again of the context that i've gained from the anthropology major it's all relative you guys so yeah i don't think my culture is weird but i don't think any other cultures are weird either the next question that i have is actually a fun one and i don't know if i've ever talked about it on my channel before and that is would you please give some insight into how you chose a research topic or resources for doing undergraduate anthropological research? So yeah, for anyone who doesn't know, I did do a two year very intensive like anthropological research project during my time as an undergrad at UCLA. And the first thing that I did was narrow down which subfield of anthropology was the most interesting to me. And for me, that was biological anthropology. And so I ended up kind of in a Google Scholar wormhole. I just, you know, would read 
papers within the like broad field of biological anthropology and then they would reference like more specific papers and then I'd read those Um, and I ultimately met with my advisor and I told him that I really wanted to study gosh what did it start as I don't remember actually what my original research question was but my advisor basically I told him what I was interested in and he guided me towards the areas of anthropology that were lacking in research so then I ended up studying changes in women's physical activity across the menstrual cycle with an evolutionary perspective Um, and because you know this professor was able to guide me towards you know something that was less studied uh, it helped my project a lot but yeah my biggest simplest answer to that question is just read up on anthropology and whatever like grabs you and you want to keep reading about find something related to that This is a fun one. It's more directly about anthropology than my own experience with anthropology. Um, And it is, when we talk about the nature versus nurture debate, does anthropology as a discipline focus and believe more in the nurture side of the debate? Um, And the answer to this question is actually no. So anthropology is a really broad field. And so within anthropology, there's both cultural anthropology and biological anthropology. And so I think some people might argue that different anthropologists will have a different opinion on the nature versus nurture debate. And for anyone who isn't familiar with the nature versus nurture debate, it's basically this idea that, you know, are we like myself and you more of a product of our genetics? Are we more of a product of our culture? And anthropology doesn't take one side of this debate. It definitely comes down to the person a lot more. I personally am of the belief that we're never going to be able to disentangle nature versus nurture entirely. Um, But different anthropologists will have different opinions on this completely. So to answer this question, no. Anthropology is not on the side of culture. Um, but it's also not on the side of nature or yeah, nurture. I I think you get my point. The next question that I have is from Jane and it is how much does an anthropologist make a week? Now I actually recently did a video talking about why not to major in anthropology. If you want to go check that out. Um, but in that video, I talked about how anthropologists on average make about $61,000 per year. So editing Olivia, you're going to do the, uh, the little math there, what that comes down to weekly. Um, and that statistic is just in the U S from the sources that I was able to find. Um, but anthropologists in general don't make nearly as much money as I think they should. Um, this is an issue of like the institution, like socially, so many different things. Um, but yeah, anthropologists don't make a ton of money inherently. Some do then him and maybe that could be you. I don't know. Um, but yeah, that that's that's the answer to that question. <laughs> Ooh, this one's lovely. Um, it says, hi, like your channel, more book recommendations? Yes. Okay, I'm spoiling a future video, but I literally today finished My Life with Chimpanzees by Jane Goodall. Holy cow. Oh my God, it was so good. Um, so highly recommend reading that. It's super short. Um, my favorite ethnography is called To Hami. Um, Sabians is wonderful. Guns, Germs, and Steel is interesting. It's good, um, but go into it with an analytical mindset, and I think you'll have a good time with it. What else? Oh, and a lovely linguistic anthropology book that I recommend to a lot of people is Articulate While Black. Um, So yeah, those are some anthropological book recommendations from me. Okay, Kyle said, make a video on muddle in the middle, progress of stone tool technology and manufacturing techniques. Um, This might be coming. That's all I can tell you right now, but um, something very related to this and exciting is coming. So Kyle and anyone else who's interested, keep an eye out. (laughs) Okay, Rohan said, if you were to do field work tomorrow, which part of the world would you go to? Literally, guys, anywhere. I am obsessed with geography. It's like my favorite thing ever. Um... Anywhere. I want to go to field work today. Yesterday, actually. Um, I do work a full-time job, so this is harder for me than I, you know, I wish it was. Um, and literally anywhere. So t- literally anywhere. I Since I just finished my life with chimpanzees, Africa sounds really cool. Um, but also like anywhere. Island like, I don't know, guys. There's so many cool places. Gosh, guys, I don't want this video to be a year long. 
but I want to get to everybody. It's a struggle. <laughs> okay, so Muhammad said, Hi, I'm a history student. I want to specialize in ancient Sudanese history, and there isn't a proper anthropological analysis of this period. And I want to do an anthropology practice here. So my question is, how can I understand anthropology without a uni degree so I can blend it with my major? This is a lovely question, and I actually did a video a while ago on how to study anthropology without school. Um, so I'd highly recommend checking that out. And then I would also just recommend reading works about the methods of anthropology. So how to do like an anthropological analysis, you know, and learn about how anthropologists actually conduct their research. Um, because if you can do this and apply some of the same frameworks to your interest in Sudanese history, I think that will at least get you part of the way there. Um, this isn't my specialty, so I hope that helps at least a little bit. Um, but that sounds really interesting. Definitely tell me more about that. That's so cool. Okay, the next one that I have is I am going to graduate in anthropology next year from India. I'm thinking about pursuing a master's from abroad. What are the things I should keep in mind? I really enjoy the subject, but I'm confused about the path. Which country should be ideal and what should my and what should be my approach? There we go. I get this question actually all the time, and it's one that I never know how to answer. Um, and I'm specifically referring to, you know, which country is the best. Um, this is a hard one for anthropology, at least, because anthropologists literally go all over the world to study different parts of the world. Um, so it's a tough question in itself to answer. Um, so, and I also just don't have like the entire like knowledge of all anthro schools all over the world. So for you, I think I would just recommend looking inside yourself and asking what do you value out of an like anthropology program? Do you want to be able to go abroad? Do you want to be able to study culture or primates, right? Make sure you find a school that offers the program you're interested in. Also, of course, take into account finances, you know, how realistic these options are. Um, and yeah, I'm sorry if that wasn't more helpful. Um, anthropology is really unique in that we go everywhere for it. Um, so I would recommend looking again inside yourself and just thinking of the place that, you know, matches your needs the best. Okay. I think those are all that I'm going to be able to get to today. But again, anyone that I wasn't able to reply to in this video, I'm going to leave you like a response in the comment section. So yeah, thank you so much for everybody leaving questions. I love answering your anthro questions. Um, and let me know if you guys want to hear about, you know, I've been thinking about doing a video that's like my journey with anthropology. Um, the, you know, the things that I've done in anthropology as a way to get people started. I've done a video similar to that in the past, but I'm just curious if that's something that people would be interested in. Also, let me know, was the mic too much like this? Was the sound bad? That does happen. So just let me know. Okay. I'm just having so much fun. I don't want to end this video, but I'm going to because I have work to do. So I will see everybody next Monday. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And yeah, okay. Bye, you guys.